Hello and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve and this is DaVinci Resolve Quick Tips, so let's just jump right in. In today's Quick Tips we cover the differences between the primary wheels and the log wheels. If you're at all like me, kind of stupid, uh, when I first started grading I thought that primary wheels were meant for standard Rex 709 footage and I thought the log wheels were meant to be used with log footage. The truth is you can use them with either. What they are is primary wheels work in a linear fashion and the log wheels work in a logarithmic fashion. So what does that actually mean? To do this as an example, before we jump into real footage and practical examples, is a grayscale because you have a simple line, just a linear line going up on your scopes like this. So if we look at the primary wheels um, and we do a lift to our shadows, you can see that everything linearly moves up in that fashion. Same with highlights and then gamma is your mids in between. This is the exact same as taking your RGB curve and moving it up and moving it down in that linear fashion. The log wheels work in a logarithmic fashion. So for example, the low range here is set to 0.3333333. So if we set a point here at around a third of the way up, and we'll just make sure that we haven't adjusted anything. And now we lift our shadows. We've set a kind of stopping point and we are only lifting those shadow values for the most part. So let's lift them to the like one to eight mark here. And we'll just do a placeholder up here to make sure the rest of the image isn't taking that knock. So if we hit control D, you can see we only lifted our shadows. The rest of the image isn't getting affected. And the curve here kind of reflects our curved uh, here. Logarithmic. So if I reset that and we'll do this with our log wheels now, if I lift up and get our shadow values to the one to eight mark or so, it's the exact same thing. And with our low range set to point, that's what we get. However, I can move that up to say 0.5 or in and around there. Now, our value is bending around the 0.5 mark, as you can see, and it's not going to kind of go beyond that. Um, so you get this extra degree of control. And the exact same can be said for our highlights. You can pull down on the highlights. Right now, it's bending around the 0.550 mark, so right around here but we can make that higher. So only really hot areas of the image are getting affected by this adjustment. Um, so that's pretty much that in a nutshell. So if we jump over to some actual footage, we can take a look at some practical looks for this or some practical uses. So first of all, just like uh, usual, let's say I wanted to lift my shadows and I do this, but the whole image gets lifted and my mids are getting lifted and the highlights. Um, and if I'm on my primary wheels and I lift there, the exact same thing happens. So we'll reset that node and we'll jump to our log wheels where we can now drop or lift our shadow areas only. So basically anything that's 0.333 or below will be getting affected by this. And of course, I can adjust my low range to go say I want only areas in 0.15. So from here below being affected. So now even less of the image is getting affected in the shadow range. And of course, we could do the same with our highlights. We could pull up on those highlights there and have less of the mids getting involved in that highlight adjustment. But here is where I really like to use it because I'm pretty comfortable with getting my tonality into place using points along the curve here and doing multiple adjustments like that. Um, where I like to use this is to control just how much color is getting into my shadows or highlights if I'm doing stylized looks. So right here, it's begging for a teal orange look. So what we can do is start pulling in our teal into our shadows. And my rule of thumb is find the color first, then worry about the intensity. So we go pretty extreme, we go, that's the color I like. Let's dial that back in so it's not so saturated. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, that's great. My shadows are where I want them to be. And up here is not too bad, but it's starting to leak into our mids quite a bit. So I can come into our low range here and start dialing that down and see how we start to reclaim the color of our mids back to where they originally were. So I can fine tune that so only our darkest of shadows are getting affected by that. 
And of course, on a new node, I can do the exact same where it highlights. So we'll purple, go towards purple with our highlights so that we can kind of cheat this uh, sodium vapor look to our highlights here. So kind of a combination of that orange and purple brings us towards quite an intense sodium vapory warm orangey red. So we've done that and that's kind of cool, but again, it's kind of leaking too much or maybe not enough. So we could let it leak into more of the image or less of the image by kind of telling Resolve where is that threshold for that highlight adjustment. So we'll go and say, that looks kind of cool like that. It wasn't too far off from the default. So with those two nodes using the log wheels, we've been able to get a finer degree of control to where the image gets affected and leave our mids, so where our face here, reasonably untouched. So that's pretty much log versus uh, primary wheels in a nutshell. The way to think of it that helped me is primary wheels are linear adjustments and log wheels are logarithmic adjustments. So basically there's some sort of curve involved. So we hope you found that helpful and we will see you in the next one.